on the field or what, what's about to be on the field. Uh, Jack Leach back in the squad. A little mm-hmm. bit surprised by that, mm-hmm. actually. I thought they might have just not not gone beyond Leach, but I thought that maybe, just maybe, given it's Old Trafford, they might play Matt Parkinson, knowing that their mm-hmm. stated, well, Chris Silverwood's stated position is he doesn't want to give players debuts at the Ashes. Now, he may not get a chance to live through that if a number of England players don't come to Australia. And that's a very real thing Uh at the moment. Make no mistake. There are a number of England players with school-age kids who do not fancy at all the idea of their kids finishing term, coming out, being with them for five or six days and going home again. And I'm sure we'll get Mm -hmm. all the usual stuff about, oh, well, back in the good old days, they used to get the ship for six months. You know, Des Redford would swim from, you know, David to Calais, do a tumble turn and swim back as they said on Martin Malloy many years ago. Uh, It isn't, (laughs) you know, industry standards have changed and and community standards have changed. So players expect to be able to um, have their family with them, especially uh, in these conditions. So I'm sure that will be resolved, as you pointed out, a couple of weeks ago, Jeff, but it's the problem with school term and how it mm. runs right up until the point where if they came out to Oz at that stage, they'd only get five or six days with the players So before having mm. to go back the other way. So that that's a, a bit of a watch this space. But on that basis, maybe they will mm-hmm. need to have players make their, their test debut in Australia. Nevertheless, yeah. Jack Leach plays instead of Parkinson here and Josh Butler returns to the squad. Now, mm. I didn't think he would. I kind of got the impression that he would miss both test matches with his newborn child. Um, but the yep. fact that Joss is back, who's going to miss the 11 this week for England? I Johnny. I mean, it's it's, it's probably best though, isn't it? He's had a pretty good yeah. series with the exception of, I mean, obviously he gets bowled by Boomer yesterday. He's had no case. He's had no case series. series. But he's, yeah, he's, but he's made, you know, he's made 20s and 30s. He hasn't, and, and he's, you know, made fourth ball ducks and, and whatnot. Yeah, I yeah. mean, he's, I've never been entirely convinced by him as a test player. Even, you know, he had that one brilliant year where he made 1,600 runs or whatever it was. Yeah, but yeah. certainly in the last four or five years, he's he's been capable of doing things like the last day at Headingley where he makes whatever he made, 45 or something in quick time. And that can be really valuable on its day, um, but it's not necessarily valuable. I mean, he's made a lot of very early ducks as well when he came in in India, batting at three and was getting out second ball, third ball, fourth ball. Um, yeah, there have been a lot of times when he hasn't done the business for England, put it that way. Yeah, he hasn't made himself undroppable, I suppose. What do you think about the Parkinson sort of idea? I mean, a wrist spinner in Australia, to my way of thinking, especially one that can turn the ball like this guy. And it's not like he's a kid anymore mm-hmm. either. He's 26. Like It feels like very capable cricketer. Is, and I know he's not playing in the championship right this very moment, but you know, body of work stuff across the year, he's playing white ball cricket for England periodically. Well, he was. He's been in squads. I mean, he, I mean you know, pl- wouldn't you just play him? He put in a real shift when Lancashire were trying to bowl at Warwickshire on the last day of their match the other week. Uh, it was pretty flat. It was very defensive. Parkinson had the ball 45 overs in that innings. There wasn't much doing. But he still picked up four wickets. He made things happen. He he bowled Dom Sibley around his legs when Sibley was looking to be very defensive and you know just tried to sweep one away and it got around behind the pads and, and bowled him, got it to turn that much out of the rough. He got big turn as well, had one caught it slip uh, into the bargain and got that bit of extra bounce as well. He was able to rag them where nobody else really looked a threat. And so, I mean, that seemed notable that, in a match where really nothing was happening on that last day, he was the one player who was able to make something happen, to get something happening. It'd be pretty hard if you were Jack Leach and you got sent back to Somerset and then another spinner gets jumped back into the squad ahead mm, of you. Mm. Um, that's not really looking after Leach, but mm. is Jack Leach going to win England the Ashes in Australia? Kind of doubt it. Um, is a leg spinner going to be maybe more use than a, than a left arm orthodox? I mean, finger spinners don't generally come to Australia and have a good time. No, that, that's right. That was certainly the case for Moen Ali last time around, and he's the incumbent spinner right now. So do they play two spinners at Old Trafford? Probably, because Moen's in the top seven. Anyway, time will tell. There's only two days until the next test, so we'll find out soon. As for India, I don't think anyone really knows whether Rohit Sharma and Chiteshwar Pujara are playing uh, this week after their niggles. Uh, we don't know an awful lot more about the support staff who contracted COVID either. In addition to Ravi Shastri, there was two more positive cases, we believe, but they've been sort of keeping a fairly straight bat about all of this. So um, I suppose from India's perspective, it's just all about ramming home the advantage and winning 3-1. The incentive is there uh, to actually win the series rather than simply to, to draw it at, at two apiece. So, yeah, I, I think that uh, that um, 
that India will almost certainly be in a position where they can rotate their fast bowlers. Uh, Muhammad Shami was a niggle, but he he was wearing the red vest the whole week. I don't think it was a niggle. Mm. You know, by that I mean he was running out drinks and running out gloves. So whatever the niggle was didn't preclude him from doing that. So yeah. maybe He Shammy, wasn't on the table getting, you know, his quad intensively worked on. Yeah, whatever. exactly. So presumably Shami returns and they can, you know, maybe you shuffle out Siraj, your shout Or Siraj, Siraj, good shout. Yeah. Siraj has played non-stop so yeah. you would think that he would miss the last test in order to have a rest he looked a bit cooked um at the oval he was the one bowler who wasn't really influential at the oval um i suppose boomer is maybe due a rest as well but i don't think they will rest him he's just too valuable and when you look at the forecast that test is going to be interrupted they're probably well they're India. They're definitely not going to be bowling 90 over days anyway. Um, they'll be yes. bowling 80 tops. Yes. And if you, if you throw rain into the equation, maybe they're bowling anywhere between 10 and 60 overs in a day. So even when they are bowling, there won't be that as heavy a load on the quicks. 